Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to tell you about a new Airbnb scam that I actually fell for. Uh, luckily, I caught it soon enough to where I was able to get a full refund and still able to book another Airbnb before the prices went up. But hopefully you can learn from my lessons and not have to go through the hassle that I had to go through. So here's the Airbnb scam and here's how it works. Someone will hack an old Airbnb account or create one and get a couple of reviews. I think they hacked the accounts because here's the example of the one that was um, that did the listing that I had. Their name was Luke. They had their family. They had two reviews. They joined in 2019. You know, their identity was verified. Their email address was verified and their phone number was verified. And then I even read the reviews. And it said, oh, Luke and his family were great when they stayed, blah, blah, blah. So that's why I think they're hacking accounts because he didn't make a stay since 2020. So his account literally was laying dormant for about two years. The next step is to find a house in a desirable area. They may find one that's already been sold. But the point is, is that they're stealing photos from active listings or previously listed homes. Um, in my case, it was actually an active listing and it was in Scottsdale, Arizona, which around Christmas time, which is kind of a desirable area for snowbirds. The third step is create a Google voice number and a form of payment. So the phone number that they verified, I don't know if it was verified under Luke when he was actually a legit person or if they added the Google voice number to verify. Um, I have a feeling it was under Luke, but I don't know. Then they list the house out several months with no cancellations. So that's kind of the key. So I booked in July and it was for December 21st through January with no cancellations, even if I wanted to cancel within 24 hours or, you know, even if I wanted to cancel two days later, I couldn't cancel, which was our case. The next step is they get the deposit. So the listing I had also had a large deposit, half down now and half at the stay. You also have the option of paying in full up front, but um, for some reason we only paid half. I don't remember why we usually like to pay in full up front, but we only paid half this time. Maybe because it sounded too good to be true and it ended up being too good to be true. But the point is, is that they get their deposit and then at that point it's too late. Airbnb will still refund you, but um, usually the prices have gone up by, by the time you find out it's a scam. So this scammer actually thought this one very well through. Um, you don't get the address until after you book, so it's kind of hard to verify whether it's listed for sale or not. But right after I bu booked the house, um, <clears throat> I just was kind of being nosy and I wanted to see how much the house was worth, how much they paid and stuff like that. And, um, actually noticed it was for sale, which was kind of like, which I thought was kind of odd considering it was for sale in July and we were going to be staying in December. So this was the message that I sent on July 4th to Luke, the host who is a scammer. I noticed the house is for sale. Our reservation is for Christmas. Is this going to be a problem? Never been in this situation before. Not sure what happens if you sell before then. Which, you know, not an immediate concern, but definitely several red flags going on. So I called Airbnb support and told them, hey, I'm worried, you know, that I'm going to show up on Christmas and the house isn't going to be available. I know you're going to refund me my money, but that's not going to do me any good because the prices are going to be a lot more expensive on Christmas they reassured me that everything's good, he's been verified, and that they would send him a message. So then July 7th, or well, July 5th, I text, I tried calling him. It was a Google Voice number. So that was another red flag. He didn't pick up. July 6th, I texted him. No response, another red flag. So then July 7th, I called Airbnb support to let them know, like, hey, I've been trying to reach him. Luke and he hasn't been responding they let me know that he responded to them and that he's happy to host us he's so excited can't wait to see us and so I thought oh that's odd okay well at least he's responding and then I told him I said is there any way you can have him message me um, and they said yeah we'll tell him to message you well sure enough nothing for the seventh eighth and then on the ninth I messaged him again early in the morning 
you know, hey, Luke, hope all is well. Just wanted to follow up on our booking. We don't want to be left stranded with our baby on Christmas. Just want to confirm the house will still be available if you sell. I figured he wasn't going to respond again. I just wanted to put it in there showing like, hey, I'm actively reaching out to the host. At this point, I believe I could have gotten their full refund due to him not responding within a specific time frame. I think it's 24 hours. But um, because he was responding to Airbnb support, that's where they were thrown off. Uh, which, by the way, Airbnb has one of the worst support, customer support out there for any business that I've ever seen. It's absolutely horrible. Um, they Every time I call them, they kept reassuring me, oh, you're good. He responded again. He said he can't wait to see you. So finally, I just took matters into my own hands. I called the real estate agent that had the listing, left him a voicemail. They called me back about an hour later, and they said, absolutely not. This house is not listed on Airbnb. It's a single person that lives there. <clears throat> so then I called Airbnb customer support and let them know, hey, uh, this listing's not legit. you know. And they kept saying, well, let me reach out to the host and make sure it's legit. And I kept telling them, no, the host is the problem. So after about six representatives, I must have spent three full days on the phone and sending emails and going back and forth um, it was just extremely frustrating. Um, so Rose apparently was, you know, supervisor and was going to look into this. And she said, let me look into the account. So I figured I'd just summarize for her. And I told her, I'll summarize for you. I have reason to believe Luke's account has been hacked and is being used to host illegal listings. This is an urgent matter considering Luke's ID and personal information may be at risk. Their response was almost comical. I, I, at this point, I just laughed. Thank you for reporting this matter and bringing this into our attention. We will reach out to the host and provide further assistance as required. So at this point, obviously I realized their customer support was absolutely horrible. So I just said, I just told you the host's account was hacked and your solution is to notify the hacker and give them a heads up. Great idea. Fortunately, I, uh, I had to email um, I found the CEO's email and some other executives' emails, and I spent literally another full day just emailing and doing everything I good, could to get the attention of Airbnb outside of their support because they were completely useless. And finally, somebody looked into it and determined that it was indeed a hacked account, and they refunded our money. I'm going to tell you how you can avoid all of this potentially in advance because even airbnb fell for it and if i was not persistent this booking would still be live and i would be set to show up on christmas day with no house so how you can protect yourself i actually just assumed that airbnb was safe and that they didn't have hacked accounts and that it would be easily caught on their end because they have the address before you book the property so I was just assuming that Airbnb went through several precautions to make sure that scams like this didn't exist, but obviously they don't. That's why um, this hacker was easily able to, to do this. I think this hacker obviously thought through it because he knew Airbnb support was horrible and he knew exactly what would happen, that their protocol is to reach out to the host. So if he's the host, he's good to go. Anyways, one thing you can do before booking is you can always message the host anything. What, you know, after the horrible experience when we were looking and finally found another property, we messaged the host just to say, hey, does the hot tub work? We already assumed it worked, but we were just trying to get a response. That was the key, is just to try to get a response from the host. He responded within like a minute, um, so night and day. Also, check to see if they have cancellations. Um, it doesn't mean it's a scam, but it's just kind of a red flag. So if they say no cancellation and you're booking, you know, several months out in advance, you know, usually some people offer like, you know, 30 day cancellation or something, especially if it's way out. So um, also check to see how much the deposit is. Uh, the second one we booked, it was only like 10% down versus, you know, 50% like the other one. And it offers cancellation up until the day before, which is pretty crazy. Check to see if the host is local. I know there are some hosts that are out of state. Again, these aren't like automatic like signs of a hacker, but it's just kind of some more red flags to think about. If the host is out of state, how are they gonna let you into the property? 
and if they have you know uh, automatic key lock or this and that you know they're, they're just it's just another thing to think about because if they're out of state it's a little bit harder usually people live on the property for the most part or they live down the street and you know they'll come and give you the keys when you're ready to check in there's or they have a lockbox code that they'll give you which could be the case they could be out of state and they could just give you a lockbox code but you know someone living in indiana doing an airbnb in scottsdale if you have properties every week chances are you're gonna have to go to the property once in a while because someone's gonna lose the key someone might you know you have to change the lock after every stay it's just one of those things you kind of got to think about like how are they managing it i guess uh which you don't normally know until three days before check-in but just something to think about is if the host is local it makes a little bit more sense if they're out of state it's kind of like hey a little bit more red flags to think about see if the house is booked prior to when you want to book so the listing that we booked before that nobody had booked it and as soon as we booked it i tried to go find the house and it wasn't available for any other days so i i'm not sure if i would have been able to book you know like a month out i should have just tested it before booking but i think as soon as i booked the guy immediately removed the house um, check to see the one that we just recently booked. The guy had already rented it out twice. Uh, so it's like a newer Airbnb house, but he already had two reviews and he responded. And so everything, you know, all the red flags were kind of that he lives in the area. Check to see if the host's reviews are for hosting and not for stays. So the account that was hacked, it was for them staying. It wasn't for them hosting. The one that we just booked recently had two reviews as a host. Now, if you've already booked an Airbnb and you want to know if you've been victim of the scam. So the first thing you want to do is email your host through Airbnb. And the reason you want to do it through Airbnb is so that there's a record that customer service can see that you've attempted to reach out to the host and they're not responding. Um, if they don't respond, you know, and you want to try to get a hold of them sooner, you can call them, you can text them. Obviously, if they respond, there's no need to call or text, but that's just more evidence that you can go to Airbnb with and say, hey, this person hasn't responded through email through Airbnb. They haven't responded to the calls or text messages. I think the most important thing is you should just check uh, the address on Redfin or Realtor or any website, Zillow, just to see if it's for sale. Because that's probably where they're doing the same thing. All they're doing is just looking for houses for sale. Now, granted, some of the houses might be pending by the time you're um, looking. So do a search for active listing, uh, pending listings, active with contingencies, or possibly even sold. You know, it might have just recently sold. You can reach out to the listing agent. Now, I know on Redfin, it just has their listing agent's name and brokerage. So all I do is I take their name and brokerage and I just Google it. And usually you can find their phone number or their email address. If not, you can get the real estate brokerage office and they should be able to direct you to the real estate agent. And usually the real estate agents are pretty responsive and want to help because this is their clients. And, you know, also, you know, I think who doesn't want to help catch a hacker or scammer? If you're in the area or you happen to know someone in the area, you could always just try knocking on the door and asking if it's listed on Airbnb just to confirm. Um, I had family in the area and was that was kind of the next step was to see if someone could go out and knock on the door and see if the person was indeed listing it on Airbnb. But luckily the realtor responded right away and we got it resolved quickly.